Hey buddy, hey it's the Dan here and welcome back to more Fall Fantasy the City on the PS4. For so the last part we played at the Sky Pirate Vaughn, and how much the hit detection was just shit. Like, the hit detection on this was just awful for some reason, like, ugh. His movesets were also really off balance too. Like, they were just really confusing and really hard to pull off, really. So here we go with Fall Fantasy 13. Ugh, lightning. Ugh, I, I just can't say Fall Fantasy 13 without just bobbing a little bit in my mouth. 13? The first one wasn't that bad story-wise. It was confusing a little bit. It wasn't, the gameplay-wise really wasn't that bad. But the whole fact is like, if your party leader dies, you, you like everybody dies, kind of I was shitty. Like, say like, if I had these three in my party, if I could play 13 and these three were in my party, and Lightning's the leader, if Lightning died in battle, you know, it's instant game over. You know, I can't switch over to this person, or I can't switch over to this person, so I can use, like, Phoenix Down or shit to revive her. No. If Lightning goes down, game over. That's pretty much it. And that was just really awful, especially when you're fighting really hard enemies. And, like, they focus on you. And, like, boosh, dead. <laughs> GG. I'm like, really? Can I not switch to, like, Snow or Vanille so I can, like, you know, use Rays or Phoenix Down so I can, like, bring her back to, to the party? You know I mean? Final Fantasy XII did that, like... If I had Vaughn at the leader, and Vaughn dies in battle, I switch to another party member until I have him back up again. Like, why couldn't the shit they do that? You know, it was the only Final Fantasy game that did that, and that was like one of the biggest backlashes. And then, then they came the two sequels nobody asked for. We didn't want Dead 2 or, or Lightning Returns 5 and 13. We didn't want those two, but they gave it to us. We were like, yeah, we don't, we don't really give a shit about these two. Just, just give us, at the time, we were like, just give us 15 already. Come on, just... just Shut the fuck up, get a 15. Final Fantasy 13 2 was confusing as shit. It had to do with timelines and plot points. It like, had to do with timelines and different scenarios and all this shit. It was basically the Flashpoint Paradox meets Final Fantasy. It was basically that. And it was just... What? And then Final Fantasy Lightning Returns... Uh, Lightning Returns Final Fantasy 13 was even more fucking confusing. Comparatively in this universe, nobody fucking ages. Comparatively... Lightning Returns 2013 takes place like 500 years in the future, yet Snow, Vanille, Fang, Sa, apparently they're all still alive, even though it's been 500 years apart. So apparently it's. What? It's, like, it's just like, wait, what the fuck? Like, huh? Okay, so Lightning is like some sort of goddess, or some sort of like, you know. Well, I thought she was like some sort of soldier, or some sort of like, you know, an ex soldier who's looking for her sister, you know, who basically became an LC. You know, to find her sister, but wait a minute, now she's like, she like got us for some reason? Wait, what? So, apparently at the end of 13, we fucked up or something, and I became, like, you know, a god. Like, what? It's very, very fucking confusing, to the point where we're just like, ugh, I'm fucking just, ugh. Here we go, guys, playing as Lightning from Final Fantasy 13. Lightning's commando role helps overpower enemies with physical attacks, while Ramja role keeps them at bay with Beverly spells. Build her phone's magic until you have uh, opening, then go in for the kill. So guys, I want to tell you guys this, like, funny thing. Yeah, basically, alright, nothing. Lightning, her weapon, is also, like, Squall's weapon, because her, her sword, actually turn, yeah, her sword, or, or, yeah, her sword actually turns into a gun. But the difference is between Squall's gun blade is both a gun and a sword, to the point where it's like, it doesn't change between gun and sword, it's both at the same time. Lightning is either a sword or a gun. You know, she slashes the sword, the sword changes to a gun, and then it changes back into a sword. It's, don't ask me how that shit works, it's just another one of the confusing parts of Final Fantasy XIII. So guys, I want to tell you guys a funny story. Um, my friends, I don't know how, but they find all these, like, fucked up videos. Hey, you have my thanks. You have my thanks. Yeah, like, they find all these fucked up videos on the web, of all these like fucked up things, and it just doesn't face me. Like you, like they don't realize years of playing video game molded you to like not really like seeing those shit. Like not really like you know, doesn't really face you. Like some of the stuff they show, like majority of things they show me, I look at it. And I'm just like, yeah, this is kind of fake. Like yeah, it's fucked up, but it's it's kind of fake, so it doesn't really like you know, doesn't really matter. I have allies who can help. I have allies who can help. They bring, they call them forth. We've got this one. Yeah, like they show me like, a lot of fucking videos, you, and you. when I see them, I'm like, some of the times I'm just like, yeah, you do realize some of the fake as fuck. Like, there's no way it's real, so like, 
you thinking that fucked up, you just like being like, oh my gosh, how can this happen? How can they do this? Oh my god, it's so wrong! Like, it's like, yeah, you realize something like fake, like, you know, it's, I'm not really like, nobody fake me all that much. Like, there's two of them that they showed me where one of them I didn't get fake by it because I it looked fake to me. To me, it looked really fake. And to them, they're like, oh my gosh, yo, it's not fake, it's so real, it's actually happening. I'm like, you yeah, know, it looks super duper fake. Like, I'm sorry, but like, if it is real, I apologize I'm saying this, but to me, it just looks kind of, it just looks really fake. There's a lot of stuff in there that made me question, like, is this really real or fake? And the other one, I'm just like, if you use common sense, it really would be as fucked up. Like, it really would be that bad. Oh, real shocking. If, like, if they just use common fucking sense. The first one they showed me, the one that I thought was fake, was, um, like, like, apologies? It, it, just, it just sounds, like, very, like, like disturbing and all that. It, oh, what the fuck? Like, oh, yeah, apologies it just sounds disturbing. Like, I'm not, I'm like, this might get into a little bit of disturbing territory, so, yeah, apologies if you're You can mute me if you want. You can mute it if you want. If you don't want to hear, like, the fucked up man, you can just mute me. Like, I'm not gonna take offense to it. Like, I won't take offense, like, to you I understand. I understand, like, you know, it's a little bit fucked up, but you don't want, like, you know, you don't want to hear it. I can understand that. So, here we go, guys. Are you ready? So, basically, the first video was of a, of a person committing suicide by jumping off the building. And, yeah, it showed everything. It showed the person jumping off the building and hitting, hitting the ground. And I thought that was fake a little bit because, first of all, I, I'm sorry, but, like, it just seemed like the way they hit the ground, it seemed more like it was a like a mannequin that somebody put that somebody duct taped a watermelon on the head of it. It seemed more like that than an actual human being to make suicide hit the ground. Cause like when they hit the ground, it was like Kablack! it was like you no, know, it was like you know, and like you know, you saw like things like you saw like you know, like their, I, I would say like the brain down or something like that just fly up in the air and all that stuff. Like you know, I was like. That looks more like someone like threw a watermelon off the building than an actual like somebody's head actually the ground. And the second and secondly that I looked at I thought it was fake was that the police in the video they weren't really doing anything to stop the situation or contain it. In fact they weren't doing anything at all. It was basically like the police were just like standing inside. I don't know what the fuck they were doing, but you know, I assumed that that video was real and somebody was committing suicide. I'm pretty sure the cops, there would be like the EMT there, there'll be the ambulance there, there'll be the coroner, hopefully, thank goodness, the coroner, like, you know, wouldn't be there, but you know, um, you know, unfortunately, that, you know, maybe the coroner might be there. Um, oh shit, it's something, it's right. Well, to ash, but like, yeah, the cops wouldn't be doing anything. They weren't, like, you know, trying to, like, screw up the area. They weren't really trying to, like, they weren't really doing anything, and that's one thing I was like, yeah, that's really kind of fake to me. Because, like, I really don't know much about police procedures when it comes to, like, you know, suicide attempts and all that. I really don't know that much about police procedures when it comes to that. But I'm pretty sure they would try to steal off the area to make sure nobody gets to it, to make sure nobody sees that. That's a sight that nobody wants to see. Like, if that really did happen, that's a sight that nobody wants to see. I'm pretty sure they would try their best steal off the area to make sure that nobody gets to it, nobody sees it, nobody contaminates it, they have the area secured to find out what happened, to make sure that it was a suicide, was a foul play, I'm pretty sure they would do that, but the cops, they weren't doing anything, that's one thing that I watched, I'm like, yeah, that seems kind of fake to me. The other video that wasn't really, it wasn't really fucked up, it was more shocking, was a video, it appears, it wasn't really like, like a boat full of like, I guess vacationers, I guess, they look, look, they look like vacationers, of a small, like, um, like, boat, capsized, the boat, like, hit the capsized, and sunk, and people, they were, like, panicking, like, the boat filled with water, stuff like that, but, when you look at it, if they use pure common sense, then it really wouldn't be that as shocking, because the boat, it was basically, like, it wasn't, like, a cruise boat, it was more like a small, like, like, boat, it looked like a small, like, I'll say like a small, like, deer bow, where it's basically, uh, how do I put, how do I put like this? It was basically, uh, it was basically like a platform with tables and a sunroof. Basically, it, like, both sides were completely open, like, almost every corner 
of it was if completely you open. As a team, you're and yeah, the, the wall was coming out one side. Like, you know, if you use common sense, you just would swam or went to the other side thanks, and you would be completely thanks. fine. Let's meet up again and some they were all like panicking, oh my god, oh my god, they were all panicking. I'm just like, so, like, like, seriously, just calm the hell down. Just, okay, yeah. Because they already had life jackets on, so they already knew the boat was sinking. So, what they could have just easily done was like, okay, everyone had life jackets on. Okay, everybody moved to this side of the boat because the boat's capsizing in this direction. It was tilting. It was like tilting to the right. And like, I was like, yeah, okay, just move to the left side of the boat then. You know, hold on to like a rail or something like that. So, at the capsize, you don't like fall or hurt yourself. You all have life vests on, so you know, don't be afraid to hit the water. Right, and, like, this woman had a camera on her, like, as she, she was recording it with like her like waterproof phone or something like that. And I was like, just stay, just like, you're in the water, the boat capsized, you know, you all have life vests on. So, so drowning really isn't that big of a fear for you guys. Calm down. And like, I was like, yeah, just use common sense. Like, it's not really as shocking. Like, just stay above float, you know. I'm pretty sure a lot of, the, I'm pretty sure a majority of boats, like, even non-commercial boats would have some sort of communication or some sort of, like, satellite communication just in case the event of, you know, a boat capsizes. Just in case, like, a boat sinks, they will have some form of communication to, like, shore or to any or any other place to let them know that they capsized to send help. So I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm pretty sure if you just stay calm, you know, you had your life vest on, stay calm, you know, went to the opposite side of the boat, the boat was capsizing, you know, stay afloat on the water, you know, probably, maybe, like, find, like, some sort of, like, you know, if the, if the water wasn't too deep, maybe, like, you can stand on the boat that's sinking. Like, maybe, like, the boat, like, wasn't too deep to the point where you can just stand on the boat or stand on, like, some part of it or, or stand on, like, you know, hold on to something to help you keep afloat and use, like, you know, some sort of community, use your sort, sort of satellite phone to, like, call somebody. Because, no, because the woman had her phone on. Like, she had her phone recording it. So I'm just like, maybe if you stopped recording it and maybe, I don't know, call for help, maybe, like, call, like, you know, the shore call like maybe 911 be like hey I'm so and so we're out here on the boat it's sunk can you please send help I'm pretty sure if you just done that it wouldn't be as shocking or, or as scary if you just use pure common sense it really wouldn't be that shocking or scary like it really would be like for me personally if I was in this situation and I had my phone I would be panicking I'd be like okay you know the boat's sinking it's capsizing you know let me call for help I would have called for help Beforehand, before the boat sunk, like the second I knew that, and the, and they told me that, okay, brace yourself, the boat is gonna be sinking. You no, know, get your life on. The, the second, like you know, it went, it tilted to that side to a point where, yeah, it's inevitable. It's gonna capsize. I will have dialed in, be like, hey, my name's so and so. We're out here at so and so place. You know, the boat is capsizing. You know, we're taking on a law war. There's so and so passengers here. Could you please send, you know, rescue help our way? I'm pretty sure it would have been fine, like, within, like, 20, 30 minutes, you would have been completely fine. If you just stayed calm and used common fucking sense, you would have been fine. <laughs> so that was lightning, guys. So I apologize if, that's, if the stories were a little bit, um, dark for you guys. I'm sorry, like, you know, if it was a little bit, like, disturbing and dark for you guys, so I apologize for that. Um, if you guys muted me so you didn't hear it, I, I, I take no offense to that. I, I take completely no offense to it. I completely understand. So, next, guys, we're we'll doing the final final character, Yo from Final Fantasy 14. This is actually going to be kind of interesting, because she's completely new. So I have completely no idea how to use her at all. I have no idea what her range is, what her attacks are, what her defense capabilities are. I have no idea what she does. So this is going to be really fun. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like Click, don't forget to like this video, don't forget to click that subscribe button. I'll be seeing you guys when we try out your Shadow Tata from Final Fantasy 14. Peace out everyone, and may the crystal of light be with you. This celestial what's it? Then why didn't the stupid forge work? Sure, it brought him back. But when we tried to use it again on else, it didn't do a damn thing. You're lost. I can feel it has been written.